The housing sector is looking to grow at least 5% this year, driven by increased demand. They are also banking on the implementation of the law, creating the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development to boost growth. Our correspondent Shaila Francisco speaks to Chamber of Real Estate and Builders Association National President Noel Totti Carino on the benefits of the new department. There is still no IRR yet, no? but what is uh, created is the law that creates the department. Right now, what we have currently are agencies of government that are simply being coordinated by HADSI. There is no actual department. What this law brings about is an actual department with the usual budgets and with the usual powers of a department, and it will be represented in the cabinet level. So that the concerns of housing, construction, and uh, addressing the housing backlog can be brought up even on the national level. And it will have supervision over all the other agencies. The department, you know, mababantayan talaga. What were the specific problems you encountered before the creation of this law? Well, there's quite a lot, no? Uh, and the figures will show that the production of housing has not really been very encouraging. It has remained lethargic. No? Uh, while the National Housing Authority is trying to do its best, and now there is an imposition of uh, compliance on uh, socialized housing on the private developers. It is an admission that it's a failure. We are producing no, le no more than 200,000 housing units on the sector that needs it very much. No? And for a time before, there was a problem of financing takeout. No? So a lot of developers were discouraged to actually go into housing because the funds could have easily dried up. You talked about 200,000. What should it be, the amount? Kreba, for in our, in our studies and research, we should at least be producing 500,000 units a year. We're a far cry still from 500,000. The backlog right now is steadily increasing. It's now 5.8 million uh, housing backlogs. And, and it will continue to grow if the proper measures are not addressed. And one of them is, of course, funding and making sure that there is enough funds that go to the buyers to make it affordable. Right now, sino nagpapa, who is actually helping out? Now, you have private, the private sector, the banks, and pagibig. So in our proposal later on, we propose the creation of, of a comprehensive uh, fund that will address this on a permanent level. There's a bill that was filed uh, in Congress in the lower house, and this is the CISPA bill. No? It's the Comprehensive Integrated Shelter Finance Act, which was filed earlier by uh, Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. What it aims for is a 350 billion seed fund, and from there, a securitization mechanism will happen, so it becomes a perpetual fund which will fund directly and set aside funds for buyers. No? So it's not going to be lent out to developers, but directly to fund the buyer's needs. If you do that, you bring down the cost of interest rates. We're looking at interest rates that can go down to as low as 3%. From? Right now, the borrowing is at 4.5%. You know? so, and then you have a longer, lo longer payment period, no? 25 years or 30 years. That makes it affordable. And this has got to go hand in hand also with settlements that are close by the infrastructure projects that the, current, the present administration is doing. Now we have subways, we have uh, new um, programs that will address people, move, people movement. How much are you looking to grow for the sector this year? Um, easily five, seven. 8%, so that's easy for the sector. It has a downward, uh, in, uh, I mean, there are at least 42 industries that are affected when you, when you actually uh, have a movement in the housing sector. Aside from the creation of the law, what could be the growth driver? I would say that uh, the drivers would be increased. The, the demand is there. The demand is there. The supply of materials, maybe we're less and less dependent from... Uh, from imported materials, but the prices of oil, fuel, we do not have any control. So 
the prices could also spiral up, which probably will bring up the prices of real estate again and construction materials, making it less affordable. So therefore, it may dampen the take-in, not because there is no need, but because of affordability uh, questions and concerns.